How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Bobby Six. Good morning. Back to Ever Seventeen. Now we are playing tag, for lack of a better thing to do, while we wait for someone to come rescue us, which may or may not ever happen. Uh, but uh, you wants to cheat to win, so whatever. Okay, I get it. We'll try to win by sheer numbers. Yep. If we all mob together, then there's nothing the person that's in can do. So if somebody get, gets found, somebody else just kicks the can. And if that person gets caught, then somebody else kicks the can. That's right, so if you all get there at once and unleash an attack, Takeshi won't be able to defend, right? Oh, I get it. So after we all split up, we'll aim for the can and charge the conference room. After kicking the can, we'll separate again immediately. By repeating this hit and run, we'll win. Isn't that kind of cheating? Not at all. Attacking with overwhelming numbers is a basic military strategy. So it's kind of like violence by the masses? Or a democratic strategy? Whatever. In a democracy, the majority rules. In other words, those with the less numbers are weak. Okay, <laughs> intense. So we separated and all aimed for the conference room via different routes. But our footsteps were sure loud. Still, if we didn't hurry, Takeshi would find us. I just hoped that somebody would get there and kick the can before he found me. Who was that? Whoops. Suddenly Takeshi's voice rang out behind me. I was so concerned with the sound of my own footsteps that I didn't hear him approach. At this distance, there's no way I could get away. I gave up. Oh no, you caught me. Am I the first one? Yep. Dang. That means if you catch everyone, then I'm it next. I reckon so. I wonder if someone will show up to help me. Takeshi, if you don't go step on the can, then I'll go kick it. You sure know you kick the can rules. <laughs> Whack. Crash. Suddenly you came flying from the side and completely sideswiped Takeshi with a jumping cross chop to the neck. Gurgle gurgle. Takeshi's head had gone underwater. Are you trying to kill him? You was pointing at the submerged Takeshi and cackling crazily. <coughs> Takeshi floundered in the water, stood up. Hey you. <laughs> I won this battle. Hey you wait. Wait for you to catch me, no thanks. Hey you, I'll get you back for that, just you wait. Takeshi took off in a mad dash after you. Well, I guess I better go kick the can. I strolled leisurely to the conference room. When I entered the room, I found the kid. I stomped on the can. Takeshi pointed at me, declaring this. He was stepping on the can. You was near him and looked depressed. Looked like she'd lost. Oh no. Haha, <laughs> did you really think you could outwit me? Takeshi, you cheat. You changed the place of the can. Nobody said we had to put where we had to put the can, right? Besides, you smacked me, so I figured we're even. Alright, alright, whatever. Anyway, so I'm the first person you caught. You got it. Well, the plan was such a failure. Huh? What plan? As they were talking, the sound of splashing footsteps could be heard approaching the door. Shreen, I'm here. I found Sora and Sarah. Takeshi stepped on the can. Oh, did you get beaten here, Toe? You get beaten here, you? Things didn't quite work out as planned. Knock you. Don't you think you jumped the gun just a little bit? You said we would all charge together. So that was your plan? Yeah, I thought if we all went for the can at once, you wouldn't be able to stop us. That's pretty tricky. You really think so? You laughed mischievously and with a hint of embarrassment. We gathered in the center of the room. Well, finding all of you was easier than I thought. First of all, mob style kick in the can is definitely outlawed. Huh? Why? You think I can stop you if you all come in and attack at once? Impossible. That's why. It takes all the fun out of it. Timing a rush just right for when the person who is it goes searching. All of that would disappear from the game. Well, alright. You reluctantly agreed to be it the next time. Alright, everyone good with that? Sora, Sarah, I, everyone nodded. Okay then. You is it next. The can's over there. So you get it. Put it where you want and count. What is happening? The sound of a can being kicked rang out in the darkness. Hey, who kicked that? Wasn't me. As soon as she got out of this out of her mouth, you started to run away. You scoundrel! We all scattered like scared butterflies. I don't know what the deal is, but that was lucky. You said this as she ran. That was a close call, but who kicked the can? All four of us had been found by Takeshi. The rules were that anyone caught couldn't kick the can. 
It wasn't me or Naku. And Sura can't kick. I didn't kick it. Is it the Gil? You don't suppose it was Sugumi, do you? Sugumi, no way. But that's the only possibility. I wonder if Sugumi wanted to play the whole time. She was probably just embarrassed, embarrassed to say so. That could have put a new, almost adorable twist on her personality. Aha, uh -huh, we'll have to thank you when we see her. Sarah laughed happily as she said this. Alright, let's split up. You propose this as we reach the T in the corridor. Yeah, let's split up. Good luck. Okay, we'll meet up later. You went left and Sarah and Sora went to the right. Uh, I... I'm gonna quick save again. I'd say we go left though, seeing two already went to the right. Oh, kid, you decided to come this way. Yeah, but where do you plan to hide? I'm thinking about that as we speak. We kept running. Alright, what are we gonna do? As we scan for the area for trouble, we look for a hiding place. Unless we hide somewhere unexpected, he'll find us right away. Well, let's go in a room for now. As I said that, I heard something. Somebody's coming. It's probably Mayo and Sora. Probably. We peered through the darkness in the direction of the sound. We could see someone's silhouette. The build could only be... No, it's Takeshi. Really? Hurry, we gotta hide. We dove into the nearest room. There was the elevator hall. What are we gonna do? There's nowhere to hide. Takeshi steadily approached. I know, let's hide in there. Huh? Where? Yu's finger was pointing at the elevator that was stuck on its way to his white stock. It was the one that Sarah had been stuck in the day before. The door was still open. Seems dangerous, but okay. First Yu lifted me on her shoulders and I hurried into the elevator. Then I pulled her up. So we were able to hide just an instant before Takeshi came. We held our breath watching silently. No emergency light even lit the elevator. Just profound darkness and silence. I could hear you crouched next to me, breathing. I thought I could almost hear, hear my heart. I, I hope he doesn't find us. Shh, he's here. Takeshi appeared at the bottom of the stairs. It seemed that he hadn't pinned out, down our position. He was still glancing around. My heart rate rocketed. It pounded in my ears. I put my hand on my chest as if to hold it in check. Oh, oh, please don't let him find us. Takeshi just stood there. As if he was sure that we were around. That's strange, I could have sworn I heard footsteps over here. I guess it was just my imagination. It looked like he'd finally given up. Whew. Just as I sure thought the crisis had passed. Ha, 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 I sneezed well up inside me. Why now? I clamped my hand on my mouth as I desperately tried to hold it back. Somehow I managed to keep it in. Achoo! <laughs> hey! I know someone's there, who is it? He found us, run! Yeah, but where could we run? No problem, leave it to me. The next elevator, you threw herself <laughs> The next instant, you, you threw herself out of the elevator. Why couldn't she just pretend it was only her there? Then we could stay hiding there and she could run off. Yeehaw! You made a spectacular dive, turning it into a stunning drop kick. Why does she keep beating him up? She's fucking brutal, man. We fought well, but Takeshi found us. Can stomp. A short while later, he found Sara and Sora too. We met in the conference room. Alright, now I just need to get Sugumi. Takeshi stepped on the can, looking satisfied. So it's kind of weird. Weird, what is? The can, when it was kicked before, it was still in the same place. Huh? I don't know what you're trying to say. I mean, the can should have been kicked, but it was still standing up. Takeshi said this as he squished the can some more. So it was like no one had kicked it. Isn't it likely the can was toppled and righted itself? Theoretically, it's quite possible. In the same place I put it. That is odd. But shouldn't you go looking for Tsugumi? Yeah, if you're going to be a sore loser, you should at least go do that. I'm not the loser here, you guys are... Whatever, you're right. It's exactly as you say. We got it already, now get out of here and search. You and Sara waved Takeshi away. She's just so full of yourself. Doesn't even feel like I won. <laughs> Takeshi left the room grumbling. Soon after that. The sound of a can being kicked rang out in the darkness. What was that? I have no idea, but now's our chance. Do, do you think we should? I wonder if it's okay. 
In the confusion, we made our third escape. Hey, once you've been caught, it's against the rules to kick camp. We heard Takeshi shout, shouting soon after. Of course, neither I, you, Sara, nor Sora, none of us have kicked the can. Oh, then it had to be Tsugumi again. She probably sneaked into the room without anybody noticing. That's what we thought. What is going on here? It's got, is it that girl? The ghost girl? Ultimately, Takeshi caught us soon, <laughs> soon caught us again. He's very good at this, isn't he? He howled that we cheated and started out to find us right away, so we didn't get far. Takeshi checked to make sure everyone was there and stepped on the can, even once for Tsugumi. The next time, nobody kicked the can. This time the kid's it. Alright, so I'll count to 100, right? I took the can and sat in the chair with my face down. Alright, here I go. One, two, three. They left the conference room fleeing around the floor. 100. One, two, three, 100. Nice, that was quick. I opened my eyes. I set the empty can by my feet. It was as far from the entrance as I could get it. Scanning the dark area around me, I didn't see anyone. Well, I guess I'll go looking. I decided to head off to check some rooms. Oh shit. Food. Let's check the food area. A chicken sandwich shop. There was no sign of anyone there, just in case I peeked inside. And ate a sandwich or two. Of course there was no one there. This place is a waste of time. I decided to go elsewhere. Lemurian Ruins. Let's check that out. Lemurian Ruins. This attraction was designed with the motif of a lost continent believed to have sunk to the ocean floor ages ago. Standing there in the darkness in that eerie setting, it almost made me imagine that I would sunk to the bottom of the ocean. No, that was only half true. Huh? Sounded like a footstep. Was someone there? I wondered if it were my imagination. It wasn't. In the darkness in the building in front of me was the dim outline of a person. But in that light, at that distance, I couldn't be sure who it was. It was like the person was holding their breath waiting for me to not notice. But he or she looked like she was ready to dash off in an instant. I thought that if I bumbled closer the person would run away. I had to figure out who it was from afar. It had to be... You, I found you! As if it had, gi as if it had given up, the silhouette started toward me. How did you know it was me? Bingo. It looked like my hunch had paid off. Can stomp. I selected from the conference room. I returned to the conference room. There was no sign of anyone there. The can stood silently where I'd left it. Just in case, I looked at the corners of the room. Of course, no one was there. This place is a waste of time. Um, elevator hall? The elevator hall. There was no sign of anyone. Just to be safe, I checked inside the elevator that you and I had hid inside. Of course, there was no one inside. This place is a waste of time. Rest area? I made for the rest area. At first it looked like there was no one there either, but then I noticed something. One of the stone pillar silhouettes in the open area was oddly shaped. No, it was the top of the pillar that had something strange about it. I edged closer. There was definitely something there. From where I was, I couldn't tell exactly what that something was, but it was definitely a person. Maybe they thought they were acting like a koala? What did they intend to do if they fell? I mean, can you really call that hiding? I call out, called out to that clinging something. Uh, isn't that tiring? It sure looks dangerous. Are you sure I have a lot of guts? You're tougher than I thought, Takeshi. Uh, how'd you know it was me? Takeshi slid down the column. The only person stupid enough to hide there was Takeshi. <laughs> I gotcha. I stepped on the can. Central control room. We headed to the central control room. I don't think there was anywhere there for anyone to hide. Oh. The room was set up with the center... Surrounded by a giant monitor and console. There was Tsugumi. She sat slowing in her chair, staring blankly at the monitor. Tsugumi, I caught you. In my declaration, Tsugumi looked at me like I was a fly in her soup. Um, she glared at me. I'm not playing. Come on, you already kicked the can twice. Take care, she might have fallen for it, but not me. I stepped on the can just to be safe. Only Sara and Sora remained. I walked around Drite's stock looking for the two of them. I heard footsteps in the direction of the conference room. I was sure it was Sarah. Gosh, I hope she isn't planning to kick the can. I made a dash for the conference room. At the entrance to the room, the two of them were just at the door. Sarah and Sora. 
I sprinted into the room on their heels. I got you, Sarah and Sora. But Sarah just ignored me and kept running. Her eyes were on the can. It was as if she knew where the can was. Damn, I thought. I changed the location of the can. I also ran toward the can. Would she kick the can first? Or would I step on it first? Blah. Damn. The two of us tumbled to the floor. Ouch! Ow. Oh. The next thing I noticed, I was on top of Sarah. Sarah's eyes were open, staring at me. I barely managed to support my body with my arms, so I didn't come into contact with her, but... Her face was closer to me than I ever imagined. I felt like I might have been... I might be sucked into her eyes, and was captivated by her cute nose, slightly open lips, and glimpse of her tongue. I felt my breath... I felt her breath on my face. She'd been running until that time, and I felt the heat rising from her skin. The smell of sweat. The smell of our sweat mixed together. I felt the warmth of her body against me. It was hard to breathe. My mind started to go blank. My whole body stiffened and I couldn't move. <laughs> My whole body stiffened. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it was as if our bodies were paralyzed as we lay there staring at each other. Sarah slowly raised up her cheek. Oh, oh, danger, she's mad. This is not what I should have been worrying about. The can, where was the can? I turned my neck, searching for the can. There it was. I jumped off Sarah, pointed to her and declared loudly, Sarah and Sora, I gotcha. And I stepped on the can triumphantly. This is the last stepping on the can. Jeez, he slaughtered us. That was twice as fast as Takeshi. When I was there, everyone was cheating. Wow, I can't believe he guessed everybody right in the dark. It's pretty amazing. Everyone crowded around me and started making a fuss. Knock you? What are you talking about? Oh, Mayo, you didn't know? This kid. As you placed her hand on my head, she explained how I'd caught her and Takeshi. Hey, Tsugumi, give it up. Why don't you just come out and meet you were playing too? At some point, Tsugumi had returned to the conference room. Tsugumi sat in the chair pretending to be asleep and ignored Takeshi. That's what I always want to do when Takeshi's around too. I felt someone watching me and turned around. Sarah was looking at me strangely. I thought she might be angry again. It was just an accident. I avoided her look uncomfortably. I just say sorry and say it was an accident, come on. That was the end of Kick the Can. In the end, it remained a mystery who kicked the can those times. We passed the rest of the night uneventfully. It was a peaceful time, and I decided to enjoy a satisfying rest. May 3rd. I scooped up water with both hands and splashed it on my face. The incident made contact that sent a sharp shock to my brain. Yeah! I snapped open my eyes completely awake. I thought I had probably repeated this ritual several thousands of times. It was my way of refreshing myself in the morning. I lifted my face and wiped it with the towel. A smooth white counter, a sink, and a finely cracked mirror. I stared foggily at my reflection in the mirror. I passed Takeshi and I was returning to the corridor. Hey! Morning, kid. Hey, don't look so depressed, Takeshi. Nah, I'm just tired, is all. Well, a lot's happened in the last couple of days. Are you, are you tired? I'm alright. I just need to wake up, is all. See ya. Saying that, he headed off to the bathroom. Sarah and you were waiting in the conference room. Good morning. Good morning. Two of them seem wired. Morning. Hey, kid, you don't seem very good. You having trouble waking up? It's fucking five o'clock in the morning, lady. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm awake. You sure? I know, he's not a morning person, or maybe he's got low blood pressure like me. I don't know about that. Sarah didn't seem to have a problem with mornings. I was just glad that Sarah appeared to be in a good mood. I know all about it, I hate mornings. They're like hell on earth. I've destroyed more alarm clocks than I can count. <laughs> May was always the worst mo in the worst mood in the morning. I thought she might kill me today. But Naku got me in this wrestling hold. Enough, there are children around. I was getting a headache. Maybe it was low blood pressure that made me not a morning person. Maybe that's what affects me too. Maybe that's why I'm not a morning person. Finally, when Takeshi came back, conversation returned to breakfast. But Tsugumi and Sora aren't here. That's true. That they'll probably show up eventually. Well, those two, you're probably right. We all made our way to the kiosk. Everyone okay with hot dogs? They have hot dogs as well? Fuck yeah. Hot dogs? They have hot dogs here? Well, I found a few in the back of the fridge. Must have been on the stealth menu. <laughs> With that, Takeshi disappeared inside the kiosk. Maybe it was like the workers' food. It looked like Takeshi would be chef for another day, but 
What in the... Takeshi let out a surprised yelp from inside. Looking into the shop, there was Takeshi frozen in front of the freezer with the door open. What's wrong? What's wrong is they're gone. Gone? What a... The stuff, the hot dog stuff, the sausages, they were, they were in here and they're gone. I'll bet they weren't there to start with. No, they were here when I checked last night. I found them when I made dinner last night. You think they were stolen? By whom? I don't know. We could use a giant tuna in a, in a hot dog bin. Damn, who would do something like that? Or was it a salmon? I don't know. Takeshi slammed the door violently shut. Calm down, we're not out of food. We'll just go with the regular menu. Jeez. Just forget about it and start cooking. I'm starving. Me too. You and I were of the same opinion. We weren't expecting hot dogs to begin with, and I was hungry. Takeshi still looked peeved, but it was because he was hungry too. The first thing we had to do was fill our stomachs. In the end, we gave up on hot dogs and went with our standby menu, chicken sandwiches, for breakfast. When everyone had a Takeshi made sandwich in hand, we sat down for a lively and fun breakfast together. You and Sarah were especially boisterous. Takeshi said that the two of them easily made as much noise as three or more people. But that was just Takeshi being himself. The two of them never seemed to run out of things to talk about and kept jabbering away cheerfully about the most meaningless things. Hey, Nakyu, do you remember Mr. Kanishi, the teacher at our school? Konishi? Oh, you mean Connie, the music teacher that was built like a tank and a completely crazy animal lover. Yeah, that Connie. He's still there. He's been around for ages. You know what? The other day he bought a robotic dog. No kidding, he did. That mechanic phobe? Yeah. But his pets kept dying on him, and we take he'd take time off, I think he just wore him down. When I was still going to the school, he was trying to bring one of his pets back through cloning. But that clone got sick and died too, I swear he's cursed. But really, that Connie, I tell you, that robot dog looks so much like the real thing that I bet he's treating it like a normal pet. Hey, don't you have a robotic dog at your house? Yep, sure do. Actually, it's my mum's though. I think it's one of those really old types. But it just keeps on ticking along happily. It never breaks. Thinking back on it, Mayo, you never came over to my house to play, did you? You'll have to next time. I'll show you it. Really? Sounds good, if I get a chance. You can come over any time. We're friends, right? Yes, of course. Hey, can I ask you something? Just then Takeshi jumped into their conversation. Huh? What? You two seem to be close. But how do you know each other? Oh, we didn't tell you? Takeshi shook his head as he gulped down cola. You and Sara are from the You and Sara are from the same school. You graduated already. I think she said it was Q McCann Girls High School. Until this last March. I answered for them, but you nodded. And when you was a senior, Sara entered the school as a scholarship student, you added. A scholarship student? I've never heard that word before. Do do you mean one of those people that sneaks in the back door? You always have such a twisted take on everything. No, I don't. I'm not as half as being spirited as you. Due to my situation at home, I never really plan on going to high school. But the principal of Q McKen was a friend of the family and helped me get in as a scholarship student. He didn't waste her unpolished genius to go to didn't want his, her unpolished genius to go to waste. It sounded like Sarah was a bit of a protege and sort of famous. Well, Sarah's amazing. This and the information from the day before about Sarah's computer skills made me think that she might be on a different level than the rest of us. Might? You think? It's not... It's no big deal, really. Sarah looked bored as she said it. Maybe it was no big deal for her. You went to the same school, but were in different classes. Were you on a team or in a club together or something? Yep. Naki was the leader of the school club I joined as a freshman. After eating the sandwiches, Sarah helped, held the pop can with both hands and gazed at the ceiling with a distant look in her eyes. That was a year ago, right after I entered Kumikan. It was a sunny spring afternoon after class. A light wind made the cherry blossoms dance in the schoolyard as the dust gently tickled the nose. There were groups of new students walking, packaged in starched new school uniforms and expressions full of nervousness and ex expectations. There were senior students eagerly calling out to them to join their clubs. It was probably a scene played out on most school campuses. As I let my imagination run wild, I was looking around the campus, trying to get a feel for my new surroundings. All of a sudden, from among the din of voices, 
and activity, someone called out to me. Hey, you there. I stopped. Looking in the direction of the voice was a girl student. Her face, one big smile. From the ribbon on her uniform, it was clear she was a senior. Her hair was cut short enough that it just hit her ears. It made her look like a go-getter. When I pointed at myself to see if she meant me, she nodded, smiling. Yeah, I mean you. The smiling girl approached me. Do you have a minute? Sure you do, right? If you're up for it, can I talk with you? Don't worry, I won't take too much of your time. What was it with this person? I wondered if she were trying to pick me up, or... I had a bad feeling about the situation. Seeing my skeptical face, the girl with the bobbed haircut tried to explain herself. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to... I simply wanted to... I was just wondering if you'd like to join our club. So that was it. I wonder how many people had asked me the same question. I was pretty sick of the whole thing. No thank you, I'm not interested. Oh really? Have you already decided to join somewhere? No. Well then, I've decided not to join anything. Oh don't say that. Why don't you come take a look at our club room? No thank you. I bet you're all wondering what our club is all about. Not in the least. Okay, okay. Just come take a look. We don't bite. I said... Listen, stop talking. Shut up and come with me. So the persistent senior dragged me to their club room half by force. So you was that girl. You got it. She hasn't changed a bit. I mean, you're exactly the same, you. Be quiet. I was desperate then. There was nothing else I could do. Why were you so eager to get Sarah to join? It... It was a matter of life or death for the club. It could have been the end of us. She meant they were short on members and were about to fold. Oh, I see. I mean, including Naki, there were only three members. <laughs> That's pretty grim. I was going to graduate that year, and we had to get new members or we'd have to close. I just couldn't stand by and watch the club that we'd built go to waste. Well, I guess I see what you mean. So, it was, only, it was the only choice I had if our club was going to survive. So exactly what kind of club was it? We were a robust model of an intelligent beacon of education while working in the public interest. Wow. Takeshi took a swig of his cola. And what did you guys do? We were hackers. <coughs> Jeez, that's gross. You screwed cola everywhere. Stupid. Hacking is not robust and certainly isn't in the public interest. What are you talking about? It's a crime, that's why. You don't know what you're talking about. Hacking isn't a crime. Huh? You sure? Takeshi looked at me. His eyes said, what the heck is she talking about? Well, not necessarily. Depends if you're a white hat hacker or a black hat hacker. I figured I'd have to explain it. Takeshi, listen. Originally, hacking as a word meant the rhythmic, rhythmical manipulation of a computer. People that could do this were called hackers. That evolved into the word hacker for technicians and research computer experts. Probably what you're thinking about is the hacking they talk about on the news, meaning a crime committed using a computer. Like when someone steals secret information or destroys data via a computer. But that's a mistake. That kind of thing is called cracking. It's completely different. And the people that do this are known as crackers. You need to make a distinction between them. Uh, what's the matter, everybody? Hey, kid. Are you sure you've lost your memory? Well, anyway, you get it now. There's really no connection whatsoever between the word hacking and criminal activity. It was an intelligent gathering for us to gather and try to boost our computer skills. Oops, excuse my ignorance. I'm just surprised that you was involved in an indoor club. I was doing all kinds of things. All said, I must have been involved with seven groups. Wow, I see. And Sarah just joined right up then. Nope. You didn't? She didn't join the club without a fight. Mayo is mayo after all. With that ambiguous comment, you got a distant look in her eye and started to speak. That day I could have taken Mayo to our club room, but, but... So this is our hacking club room, go on in. Huh? What's the matter? It's kind of cramped, but ahead. It really is cramped. Well, I suppose. And you have tons of stuff. I suppose. I mean, there's no way I'll fit in here. I suppose not. <laughs> Like always, our little one-room club room was so cluttered there was nowhere to even walk. Several computers and a steel rack covered the three walls, and the floor was covered in a tangle of cables. In what open space there was, computers without covers and bound-up printouts were piled high. A stuffed animal bumblebee, a button with a picture of a nuclear missile blasting off, an unidentified object X and other stuff was scattered around almost completely covering the floor. 
If Mayo had been a clean freak, we would have lost her right there. Oh, Naku. Is that a new member? A girl stood up from behind a computer in front of a computer. Her chair nearly buried. She was the head of the club. She always wore glasses with black frames and kept her hair in two braids. Her name was uh I forget. That's right, we just barely avoided having our club fold. So as I answered her, I hopped from one person from one open inch of the floor space to the next in the room. Um, I uh haven't decided to join yet. Sarah was still contemplating how best to enter the room. So where's your partner? Out with the cold. I heard one is going around. You gotta be careful. Hanging out in a place like this, it'd be even more strange if you didn't get ill. Sarah gingerly entered the room as if searching for another foothold, and then another. <laughs> it's like mountain climbing. Every step she took, her footsteps were punctuated with some crunching noise, as if something were breaking. Of course, we didn't pay any attention to it. Okay, now's your chance to get a sense of what our club is all about. Please sit down. I unearthed a chair from a pile of junk and gest gestured Sarah to sit. I'm only here to look. Alright, alright. If you still have doubts, just give it a try. It's pretty fun. Can I ask you something first? Anything. This is a hacking club, right? Right. But it looks like the only thing on the screens are games. Eh, uh, well, that's true. I crossed my arms and nodded seriously several times. Actually, we just call ourselves a hacking club. None of our current members can really program. Everybody that could graduated. But even games have meaning. Uh, they aren't bad for helping. You get used to computers. Yes, what is it? I'll be upfront about this. Getting involved with me will only get you into trouble. I mean... Oh, morning, kid. Looks like we're in danger of losing our club as it is. Nothing could be worse than you not joining. Do you mind if I touch this? Sarah pointed at the keyboard. I'll be my guest. You operate it by, um... I'm fine. I know how to use it. She sat in the chair, took the mouse and stared at the monitor. She opened several files, finding the one she was looking for. She opened it up and started editing it. She didn't even glance at the keyboard, she just tapped non-stop. The speed of her touch typing was incredible. Wow! Amazing! When she finished typing, Sarah opened a different piece of software and started typing in commands. The hard disk whirred to life and finally... Wow! Suddenly the face of a bumblebee appeared on all the monitors in the room. The face stared out at us and winked. Then all the faces stuck their tongues out at us. What? What's going on? I can't get this computer to listen to me. The next instant, all the computers suddenly shut down all at once. The two of us stood there, stunned. Finished, Sarah stood up and said quietly, You get it now? Nothing good can come from hooking up with me. So don't. And then she left. What in the... What happened? The computer won't boot up. You sure it's not unplugged? That's not it, it's plugged in. But it won't start up. Huh? She meant that the software had been destroyed. And the machine wasn't limited to just one machine. All the computers in the room that were connected to the network were in the same state. No way, that girl... Could she have cracked the whole system that quickly? Looking down, there was a stuffed animal bumblebee glaring up nastily at me. No kidding. No kidding. Jeez, that's crazy. Well, Naki was so persistent, it was annoying. Yeah, but you didn't have to... So Sarah didn't join. What? Then that would mean that... No, you've got it backwards. I didn't say that she didn't join, did I? After that, Naki came bothering me like every day, even though she did that to your computers. Because she did that. Basically, you had been taken by Sarah's genius. By her genius for programming. Day after day, her fixation drove her to call on Sarah. Finally, Sarah was overwhelmed by his enthusiasm and joined the club. That was how Mayo and I became friends. Okie dokie. Alright, we need to wrap it up because we are super duper out of time again for today. But uh, we're getting some backstory here, that's nice. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for taking it out for me and I'll see you in the next one.